life. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. We. Um, we're still adjusting here. That went live, I think, a little faster than there we you thought. Go. <laughs> um, so, welcome. <laughs> welcome. We're doing another live cast. Finally. I. Um, so, I'm Abby, for those of you who don't know me. And I'm Lauren. And we're here to talk to you today about dun, 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 the book. The book. The actual Yay. book. In our hands. It's the real thing. Finally. All of it. It's great. Happy days are here again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, we wanted to kind of go over um, the book with you guys and start that conversation because um, we're really excited about it and it's been one of those weird things, you know, where we knew we wrote this book, like we really knew we wrote this book, <laughs> but it didn't feel real. Until it, yeah. Until, until it, it showed like, up. here. And so now it's like completely ah, yeah. oh my God, we, amazing. we finished writing it we wrote it over well about this time last year we started, started we working started on it, it in our in earnest with the t- um, table of contents and then we had to do all the projects in it uh, we sewed everything in it during like the worst winter in, in a Reno's really <laughs> short amount of time and we submitted our manuscript uh final manuscript had to be in like March no it was like the April. end of February because oh. before we went to magic in oh Las and then Vegas. the photos had to be done ha! yeah um uh, shortly thereafter so we wrote it um you Real know quick. about eight months ago or so mm-hmm. and then it's it went off to Page Street Publishing um who is our publisher yes. thank you hi Page Street Publishing yeah. and went through design and all of that um so we've We've kind of been, they've been doing their thing. Their hands have been touching it. Our hands touched it. And now it's, it's actually. Now we're actually touching it. Now we're actually touching it. It's like for real. Things. It's actually here. Not like um, So touching. we're so excited. Yes. And of course, we're going to share previews with you. Yes. Today. But we're, we're not going to give them all away right away. Just some of them. Just a little bit. <laughs> so we're going to do a series of videos kind of previewing the book, um, breaking it down part by part. So today we just kind of wanted to go over and it's tell general. a little bit about the history of... <laughs> I want to touch it soon. Touch it. it even smells good. Anyways, um, so we want to go <laughs> over like, the basics about the book and some things that we have planned um, in association with the book that will help um, you all as sewers and costumers, whether you're experienced or new. Yeah. Um, on how, how to use it. How best how to, to use it. it. And yeah. uh, it is a how-to guide. Yeah. Um, so we're just really excited. We're so excited. But, uh, we to want be, to, we'll do. Okay. Yeah. So down. we're all the way up to the release of the book, which yeah. is November 21st, uh, when it ships, we will do some live casts, mm-hmm. um, to talk about each of the chapters and projects that we did, uh, or the big chunky projects. Um, so many, and, <laughs> and the different decisions and whatnot and previews for those individual yeah. projects. Guys, we want to thank everybody for your pre-orders um we are number one best selling in New sewing on in sewing. Ju- no in general like for yeah. all of sewing yeah. on amazon and that's huge thanks to you it's very exciting it's only something... thanks to you guys like, <laughs> it, we didn't buy that many books the, the <laughs> fact that something like this this obscure and this niche and this nerdy can be a number one bestseller on Amazon is two a, months before it's actually in. It's crazy. Release. It's crazy. So huge, huge thank you thank to you. all of you guys. I'm gonna cry, ladies. Like, I'm so happy. Hold on. All right. Well, let's let's get okay. into it because I know you guys are waiting to see yes. it. If you have any questions while we are live, um, put them in the comments box below. They'll come up on our screen and we can answer them live. Or write something funny and we'll laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, later, this video is gonna stay on the news feed. Uh, it will not be live anymore, mm-hmm. but you can still comment, and then we will answer your comments with other comments. Yeah, as best we can. Answer your questions, etc. Okay. Okay. Well, let's start with the cover. Yeah. So um, our cover girl is the beautiful backside of. It's flipped. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, of Margaret Roberts. Yeah. This is Maggie. So Maggie, Maggie um, came out. Yeah. And sewed with us. Maggie helped modeled. us create this book. Huge thank you to Maggie. Um, if you don't know Maggie, she's the Regency Queen. Um, yes. Undressing the historical lady, um, absolutely fabulous. So she helped us to create the book, um, mm-hmm. worked on the projects, and of she course she's, for us. she's on the cover in the Italian gown, made mm-hmm. from Ikea fabric, in case yes. you were all wondering. Yes. So, yeah. so that's our cover girl. And um, Gosh, where did we even start? I, I guess it was page one. Uh, <laughs> page one. It's like page, page one. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, so so as with all books, there is like the intro section that kind of starts to to go through what we've kind of laid out for the book. So 
we start with like, so you want a sewed 18th century gown, that's eh? Fair. It's like, that's, that's actually fair. what that essay is called. Yeah. Um, There's the title of it. Yeah. <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> kind of Sorry. trying to lay all that out. Yeah. Um, but then we also break down um, historical stitches. So and we, Lauren did her beautiful illustration work, um, putting putting that awesome degree to use. Yay. Um, talking about the history of some of the stitches and things like that, especially some of the unique seaming. Seaming techniques. Um, so, yeah. So, so yeah. So we're doing that. Um, so you can learn all about um, mantua maker seam, English stitch, whatever that may be. <laughs> uh, whip stitching, you know, fun it's things like that. All the stuff that we do <laughs> in the book, um, you would reference back here, yeah. of course. And, and then we start with the English, the film. first chapter. Yeah, yeah. that's me. And oh, that's me. looking really comfy in my 40s, <laughs> 1740s stuff. So before, like, we're not going to go through everything um, with this. We're going to talk about the English gown section uh, at a later date. But I think something that's um, going to be a surprise for, for some of you, because um, we got a lot of questions when we announced the book about patterns. And that was something that was kind of tricky for us because we didn't really, we were trying to think about it from uh, our collective perspective as costumers, right? You know, we don't all have access to original garments or um, someone who can drape a shape on us correctly. You know, we all use Nora Waugh, Jan and Arnold, things like that, or we use commercial patterns. And so we wanted to create something that was usable with those items. Yeah, both both the gridded patterns in mm -hmm. books and a pattern that you could commercial buy pattern. Uh, from like mm -hmm. Sign of the Golden Scissors, J.P. Yeah. Ryan, Simplicity. Canic. You can use Nuance. the techniques in this book, the hand sewing techniques, yeah. uh, to put together any of these gowns using those yeah. pattern shapes that are already available. But what happened was, is when we wrote the book and we were kind of like, okay, this is great. Like, holy crap, we did a lot of sewing. And like, we talked to our publishers and then this conversation came up and it's like, well, how do we put it in the book in a way that feels more complete? Because it did feel like it was missing, but we could not do complete gown patterns. Like, it's just n not really feasible with how this book is laid out and how it works. So Laura and I were like, okay, well, what do we do? You know, what do we do? And the, the best option we came up with is to actually put the linings that we draped on each other into gridded form. And so this is something that we did not expect to be in the book, but we're really excited that it is because we think it's actually going to be really helpful um, for you all. Um, and just to be entirely clear and upfront, uh, these are not graded to a generic size. They're our sizes. They're our sizes and yeah. Maggie's size. So just so. as in Janet Arnold where they're they're taken off of original gowns that were made for <laughs> somebody. We don't really know. Um, these lining shapes were draped either on me, Maggie, or Abby. So you're going to need to adjust them. So if you want to know how big <laughs> or small we actually are, you can do math and Just like that with, out. with all gridded patterns, how you're going to need to adjust them. How <laughs> And how narrow mine are. They only look broad because I have puffs on So today. if you have a long torso, you're probably going to be in luck. If you have a short torso, you're definitely going to have to. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we gave you guys the lining patterns. Um, now, before you are like, ah, oh, don't worry. Because in the book, what we stress in every single chapter with every gown that we make is that if you have a fitted lining, you can build the gown on top of it. Fit the lining, you're good. You're fine. You can make just about anything mm -hmm. on a fitted lining, yeah. which is which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So that's why we put them in here. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to use the gridded pattern uh, no. and you have a fitted lining shapes, um, for instance, if you're using the golden scissors pattern mm -hmm. and you have the lining shapes and they fit you, it's the same lining shapes. Yeah. It's all good. It's perfect. Build the gown on top mm -hmm. of that. So that's why they're in there. It would be very confusing to to go through the how-tos of making the gowns without having that mm -hmm. that reference in there of here's what we're here's where we're starting. Mm -hmm. So that's why we did it. So yeah. So this so is for the sack. And, and you it, can see it does work. It was um, I did a little experiment for the Jane Austen Fest. I took the 1790s um, actual lining like the paper patterns that I had taken off of the lining for me, and I used that to create essentially my 1790s bodice block. And I was able to create that beautiful um, Indian gold block printed gown off of that. And it looks completely different than the gown in the book. Completely different front. But 
it actually totally works. So it was a fun little experiment to make sure that my uh, patterning grading right. skills worked. So this, and they did. <laughs> this is that lining pattern mm -hmm. that Abby's talking about for the 1790s mm -hmm. gown. And um, the nice thing about this book too is that, and this is kind of totally changing gears, um, it actually lays flat. Yay! Yay! <laughs> it's it's <laughs> 240 pages. Yeah, it's a um, beefy book. We, we put, primarily we try to take all this information that's in various sources. Mm -hmm. So Nora Woe and Jana Arnold and obscure Swedish books and the best all, obscure Swedish books and <laughs> our experience mm -hmm. looking at and studying original gowns mm -hmm. ourselves, Abby's experience putting these things together and put it all together in one place. Mm -hmm. It is a step-by-step how-to book mm -hmm. covering four different decades, I guess you could say periods of the Georgian mm -hmm. era, the 1740s, the 1760s, 1780s, and 1790s. So four very different gowns, English gown, sack, Italian gown, and the round gown, and all the accessories that go with it. So you can com complete an entire outfit mm -hmm. and look right. So we go all the way through how mm -hmm. to make the gown, how to make the reticule, how to make the hat, how to make the mitts, and how to get dressed. Yeah. That was very important for us. I can give you a little preview. Yeah. The how to get dressed. <laughs> In what order also do things known go as on? Close up of Abby's boots. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I don't even know if you guys can see that. Yeah, I think they can. And we, I know, I know it's backwards. I'm sorry, but you can get a sense of, you know, it is really step by step. First, put on your shift, then put on your hoops. Mm -hmm. Now you know, put the stomacher on, pin it in this way. Because a lot of the questions that we get from beginners are, I don't know, do I wear a pocket? Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to wear hoops with this? In what order do things go on? Mm -hmm. How do I pin stuff closed? So that was the final completion of that puzzle of how do you get dressed? How do you wear that hat? Mm -hmm. When do you wear an apron? Mm -hmm. All of these questions we tried to answer. So mm -hmm. it is all in one place now. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we think you guys are really going to like it. Like we keep looking at it going, holy crap, we wrote this thing. Um, we also included um, an appendix. So it's, the book has citations in it and we, we make note of them in the back. We also have a list of different gowns from different museums that we've studied. Um, here's, so here's our citations. Um, Backwards, of course, but my it's, babies. It's a lot. It's a lot. My, my sweet babies. A lot of footnotes. Uh, in, case, in case you need to um, yeah. check. Because we do, we do make some statements that, so that we're really excited to kind of put out there um, into the community and some, some knowledge and some research that we've conducted um, that will be new and a little exciting. I want to I want to preview. They're not going to be able to read it, but. No, let's not. No. Oh, okay, we'll see. Let's not. It'll be let's a not. secret You already gem. reviewed the English stitch, so let's not do the other one. Okay. <laughs> um, so we have that too. So that way, it's it's not just us completely like, blowing smoke. <laughs> um, there is a lot of research that went into this, a lot of combined research, and we're really excited. There's also troubleshooting. Yeah. With little illustrations. I mean. Um, so when you run into problems with why do I have this wrinkle mm -hmm. here, you can flip to the back of the book and hopefully there will be a, an explanation mm -hmm. there on why it's happening and how, what you can do to fix it. Yeah. Ideally, our step-by-step -step should help you not have to do that, but it's dressmaking. Shit happens. Stuff happens. We, happen. we had things happen. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Right. The amount of tears. It's like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> well, even with all the experience of three seamstresses working, well, mental makers, mm -hmm. working on these gowns, we still ran into issues. We had to piece some things. <laughs> uh, we, Is there actually a gown that we didn't piece? No. We, we, <laughs> piece, we had to piece on every single gown. It just, it happens and it's accurate. In fact, we included an essay in the book about piecing mm -hmm. and how it's all right. It's you, good. You can do it. It happens. They mm -hmm. did it too. Um, I think my favorite, can we tell the sack story? This was so Yeah, funny. we can. Really cool. Hold on. Um, so we have a comment saying they can't hear us. Can other people hear us? Can someone Is comment you, whether you, or not you can hear us? I think they would have. Yeah. This, but she's, I mean, we're getting hearts. So. If you can hear us, give us a thumbs up or blink twice if you're. <laughs> okay. Wait, right. Someone can hear us. Okay. okay. It's not. Okay. Okay. okay thank cool. you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. So um, yeah, we can tell the sex. All right, so my, <laughs> here, okay, here's Abby a be, does math good. Here's a behind the scenes uh, <laughs> story for you guys. When we were doing the sack, 
we got really, really well. We when we bought materials for the gowns, we got very lucky at our local millage shop, and we found all of our silk taffeta uh, for like two dollars oh. a yard or something uh, for all the gowns. Um, and we just assumed that everything was sixty inches wide. So when we did the sack and, and we cut, you know, the the long drape from the shoulder blades down to the back. Abby didn't double check the width of the fabric. No, I just assumed it was the same as all the other fabric we had gotten, which was 60 inches wide. It was 54 inches wide. So when we got down there, we had this like huge chunk missing from the bottom of the train. Like things just didn't match up. So we had to piece in like an entire hem bottom part to this. So if anyone saw me at Cosmic College and looked at my hem, you might have noticed. It's very like, it's like this is junk. It is the the Edward Scissorhands of... No, it's not. I've seen worse. I've seen so much worse. Of piecing. It's just (laughs) Abby's idiot. That's what that is. But but we're just going to go right ahead and say that um, that kind of shit happened on on original gowns too. Yeah. Um, You see it a lot actually. Uh, A great book for seeing where all the pieces are is the V&A is it fashion in detail? I think, Fa- yeah. Yeah, where they have the line drawings and there's like a gazillion pieces mm-hmm. in the bodices. Uh, so it's totally all right that we mm-hmm. did that. It's fine. <laughs> it was a learning experience. And if we can do it and still make stuff that looks okay, so can you. So can you. Um, <laughs> now, that being said, about making stuff, we have things. We have help for you. Yes, we do. So we have a book, obviously. Oh. A step-by-step no. guide. Uh, did we do to, that? Yes, we did. We oh. did this right here. Oh. Guy to literally like step one, <laughs> whip stitch the seam together. Step yeah. two, da da da. Hem all the way through. Hem, lots hem. of hemming. Hem this um, too. But hem this. That well. can be kind of overwhelming. I totally understand. It can be a bit overwhelming. Yeah. So we are teaming up. We're so teaming up with this. Jennifer Rossboro of oh. Historical Sewing, and she's going to offer classes on. 18th century dress mm-hmm. using the book as a textbook. Yay! Yay! So, so historical sewing. If you're interested in that, mm-hmm. go hit Jennifer up. Not actually hit her, but no. like, be gentle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, go talk to her about that if you want to be part of that class. Mm-hmm. In addition, classes. classes, online classes. And we're going to be um, remoting and Skyping in mm-hmm. for help on certain things as yeah. well. So, one of the reasons why we're doing this is that. Jennifer already has an amazing setup, like an amazing system of teaching workshops for her historic sewing. Mm -hmm. Um, She has it all figured out. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's got it figured out. We don't have that figured out. The videos. This is like the best we can do for Yeah, this is really it right now. Um, We also know that we won't really have the time to do that kind of outreach that you all will probably want or need. Um, whether you're a beginner trying to figure out how to hand sew or you're an expert and you're still having a bitch of a time figuring out how to do those (laughs) robies on that 1740s gown, trust us, we're with you on that one. What an asshole. (laughs) Uh, So we started chatting with Jennifer and it just worked out so beautifully. And her setup, like Lauren says, we'll be able to remote in, talk a lot about why we did what we did, but Jennifer is going to be the point person for you all who want workshops to do this step by step. She is the one you're going to want to go to, not us. We'll help as best as we can, but Jennifer's going to be your point person. And we are so excited to collaborate with her. Yes. This. Like we're so stoked. Beyond. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Now, in addition to that, we have created another support material that mm-hmm. goes with the book. It's a simplicity, it's two simplicity patterns, Ooh. two simplicity patterns. Um, they are coming out for the winter simplicity release. It's an underpinnings packet and it goes with this gown. Yay! That didn't make sense. It's an underpinnings packet (laughs) and this gown. gown. (laughs) Two patterns. So we've basically taken the projects from the book, uh, the gown, the sack gown project, and we created Mm -hmm. a commercial pattern Mm -hmm. from it. If you just want to sew the pattern like Halloween costume style, you want to sew it. On the machine, Simplicity has done machine sewing uh, instructions for it. But let's say you want to do it all by hand and Mm -hmm. you want to make all the accessories that go with it. All the shapes are there to cut it out, Mm -hmm. fit it, you know, use our book as Mm -hmm. your instructions and use the Simplicity pattern for your cutting to start, to cut it out. Mm -hmm. Um, 
that so that's it kind of gets you a little bit along the way i'm very very excited because abby is on the pattern envelope <laughs> so when you see abby at joanne's that's our pattern it is the same pattern that we used in the book yeah. it's based very closely on the janet arnold sack in Patterns of Fashion 1. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is a historically accurate sack pattern mm -hmm. produced by Simplicity and us. Mm -hmm. The underpinnings, now, we don't include stays or shifts in this book. We include understructures like sacks and bum pads and the split bum for the 1780s. Mm -hmm. We don't have stays. Under petticoat. Yeah. We don't have stays. Because we don't have a shift. No. <laughs> There's lots of patterns available for that stuff, but that's like yeah. a whole other book. Stay yeah. making. There's lots of patterns <laughs> available. <laughs> um, we've produced one again with simplicity that will, it's for 1760s. It's mm -hmm. a closed front stays with the crossed straps that you may have seen us wear mm -hmm. before the posture straps. Mm -hmm. It's a historically accurate shift and it's a hoop pattern, side mm -hmm. hoops. So you should be able to buy the underpinnings, they're accurate, and the gown pattern, it's accurate. Use the book to put it together by hand. Mm -hmm. uh, some, and all some by hand, some by machine. It's really up to you. And all the accessories. So they do, in the Simplicity pattern catalog and advertisements, um, the pattern packs and things like that, they are the photos of me completely dressed. So like the tuckers there, the lace ruffles are on. And those are not included in the Simplicity pattern. Right. It's, it's just the gown. The and gown the and the petticoat. And there's so, instructions for the trim as well. Yeah, but um, it's not going to be, I think, any different, except maybe just doing it on a machine. And the stomacher. Yeah. So the gown, the stomacher, which is, oh, no, wait, we did compare front. Well, we did do that. Yeah, yes. so, okay, so there easier. is a little difference. We did a compare front for the simplicity pattern. Um, it's very, very easy to just not do a compare front if you want to pin it. It's also very easy to go in this book and take the stomacher out yeah. and cut it in half and make a compare front. Yeah, so... Again, it's, it's very versatile. So, um, again, so Abby Richmond asks, when is the release date? This is now also on my mm -hmm. Christmas list. So the book comes out November 21st. <gasps> what? We haven't told them about... What? About, about us. About what? About us. Us? And us carrying the book. Oh, we will. Don't worry. Okay, hold on. <laughs> the patterns, the simplicity patterns come out for... Um, dis I think they're coming in December, but it's, yeah. it's the winter release. So they're going to come out after the mm -hmm. book just a little bit we tried to time it as best we could mm -hmm. um but i don't have an official release date yeah for the so, patterns yet. so natalie we don't have a link or a release date for that yet. sorry but we'll let you know when we do mm -hmm. but we can give you a link to our book uh, <laughs> now that being said yes you can get now you can so tell, i just remembered tell like in my notes i forgot mm -hmm. to write this down even though we talked about it <laughs> at length yesterday um so we have been asked by people a few times already um how they could get signed copies of the book and so Lauren and I talked and we came up with the idea that it would be kind of stupid for us to not sell our own Make book sell our own book <laughs> so, we're, so we're gonna have books for sale on the website mm -hmm. you can buy the book um, and and the price of the book is, is crazy it's like $24 or it's something really cheap. retail right now pre-order it's mm -hmm. like $16 on Amazon yes. that's a lot of information stupid for 16 cheap. bucks it's so cheap it's crazy cheap so buy it now yay international <laughs> publishing um, but we're gonna have you know regular old. You can buy it from us mm -hmm. for the same price. You can also buy a signed copy. Abby mm -hmm. and I will sign it for you for just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You can also buy a. We'll write you a personal note if you want. Just tell us what you want us to write it in there for a little bit more. Even so, if it's mildly inappropriate, we'll probably laugh really hard when we write it. And Laura will make me write it. I might draw something too. <laughs> um, so we're gonna have Custom those on the Google. website. We've ordered books from Macmillan to sell we're, ourselves. We ordered a hundred. Right. So. Um, so if you want a signed copy of the book, you, you'll be able to order it mm -hmm. this holiday season mm -hmm. from our website. Yay! Uh, so any questions that you guys have, obviously we're going to go through this a bit, a bit more in mm -hmm. the coming weeks. Um, mm -hmm. We're very, very, very excited about it. I'm very proud of the work that we did together. Mm -hmm. uh, we um, only fought once <laughs> over, over a sleeve fitting. Um, <laughs> I only made Maggie cry once. Sorry, Maggie. I do I love you. I, I cried a few times. I also <laughs> drank heavily. <laughs> um, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but after it's all said and done, I'm very, very happy mm -hmm. with what, what we're putting out. I hope it's useful mm -hmm. to everybody. We tried to make it useful. Mm -hmm. um, we have some questions. So mm -hmm. Anne says, will you be continuing your podcast? Oh, yeah. Yes. We are working on uh, the ability to Skype with people. Mm -hmm. um, for the podcast and record it and have good sound quality. Mm -hmm. 
So that's been a bit of a delay. Sorry. Yeah, we're working. We on have it. people like that we want to talk to and ideas. It's just we can't fly all around the world to do no, it in person. That would be really <laughs> awesome. So we we're trying to figure out um, the best sound quality for a Skype interview, so that way it doesn't sound like blow your ears out. Yeah, it doesn't mm -hmm. sound completely crap. So it's been trying to carefully figure that out, so that way we're not rushing into it. Um, and then also Lauren and I obviously have ones that we wish to do, uh, just the two of us together. Um, but we just haven't had the time to like go and lock ourselves into my like guest bedroom in my apartment where it's kind of <laughs> quiet and do it yet. So we but, should just Skype each other when we get yeah. figured out <laughs> like, across the office. <coughs> um, so it's, it's definitely going, um, this, it's not going to go away, trust me. And yeah. we got other really exciting things in the works that we can't, tell, comes, you that we can't tell you about mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the podcast and other things as well. We had uh, a question earlier about, are we going to write another book? Maybe. Um, maybe. <laughs> we've, we've been discussing it um, as a, 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 a the bestseller right now on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's likely that... Maybe we're, we'll be asked to write another book, maybe? I think our editor's watching right now, or she will <laughs> Hi, be. Lord so Lord. if you guys want another book, uh, let her know. Let her know. Um, <laughs> yep, Page Street Publishing is the publishing company. Yeah. And so we've kicked around some ideas about what we might mm -hmm. want to write that about. Um, we, we're not going to tell you right now, but mm -hmm. you'll love it. Um, these are how-to books. I think there's definitely a, a space in the world for mm -hmm. a step-by-step -step of the information that we know now. Mm -hmm. Um, to help everybody improve their impressions, um, mm -hmm. their their historical costuming. Yeah. Uh, another question from Emma: What was your favorite gown to work on in the book? The '90s gown. Ooh, that for me, hands down, it was doing the '90s stuff. That was such a fun escape. Yeah, uh, I think the '90s because we, I felt like we were cracking cracking codes there. Like there were things about it that were eye opening. That were like, oh. And we really nailed the 90s silhouette, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, because it is, it's not Regency, mm -mm. but it's obviously it has the raised waist. So we're talking 1793, 94 when we start to see that. Our gown's a little later, mm -hmm. but we took it in this Vigée Le Brun direction. My favorite. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we hope that you guys, a little, I'll just show you a picture. <laughs> yeah. We hope that you guys like what we did. Um, and we, yeah, we had so much fun with the accessories too, like with the 90s. It was just a really fun, creative, escape to do that kind of 90s like franco russian turkish inspired uh fashion like <laughs> there's abby looking amaze balls Thanks. yeah with the the turban wraps and the mm -hmm. sashes and the voluminous mm -hmm. voluminous gowns and super fun um and we were also able to work with bright text fabrics on yes a beautiful linen, oh, incredible God, spotted amazing. linen um, for that gown. So we're hoping that that gown will be displayed at Bright Tex at some mm -hmm. point yeah. um, in San Francisco so everybody can go and look at it. Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Probably means I need to clean the hem because I think the hem might be a little dirty. It's patina. <laughs> it's patina. It's been worn. So. Um, I can tell you the most challenging uh, oh, gown in the book man. is definitely the 1740s gown. It's an English gown, mm -hmm. so the pleated back um, and the pleated front. So we wanted to crack... Mm -hmm. The robing's cut in one um, with the dart here. It's they're confusing, and they're still confusing. That's putting it mildly. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. So we <laughs> we want to set that gown on fire about fifteen times. <laughs> we we <laughs> had such trouble with it that we actually did the bodice twice. Yeah. Um, it didn't help that I gained a little weight. Uh, <laughs> we did it <laughs> too. But this this is how it turned out. It's a working woman's gown. Mm -hmm. um, we did it in a lovely blue wool mm -hmm. um, with the stomacher front and all the accessories because the 1740s are all about the accessories. And then because it was so confusing, we did diagrams like this to help with the pleating in the front. It was a real bitch, mm -hmm. a really challenging gown, but with Outlander and interest in the 1740s, uh, we felt that it would be good to go ba mm -hmm. back in time that far. We didn't want to ignore the first mm -hmm. part of the century mm -hmm. uh, because those pleated fronts were really mm -hmm. the first half of mm -hmm. the 18th century. You have mm -hmm. robings. And there's different ways that you can do the robings. And so we wanted to try and figure out how to do essentially the most difficult way because we're insane. <laughs> uh, because but, 
I mean, you can you can sew the tubes on the front, mm-hmm. or uh, some of them are just completely fake. You have single robing, which is easy. It's yeah, the double it's robing. Yeah, double robing. That is so confusing. Um, so we made some discoveries there that we share with you in the book. For mm-hmm. anybody who wants to do 1740s or 50s, mm-hmm. um, hopefully this will help. Yeah. And then, of course, <laughs> we don't we didn't really have the space to go into it, but you know the idea is always that with the book that we could show you the basic kind of how to. But it would hopefully give you enough information that you can start to explore dressmaking on your own and and create different looks from what we've provided you. And so, like, we do the stomacher with the double robings English gown as the first gown. But as we all know, pleated back gowns totally had center front closing as well. So the idea is that, you know, you can take information from the Italian gown section and the English gown section and create a completely different look. Um, that's what we would really love to to see. Yeah, that's um, why we put the linings in there and yeah. not the entire gowns. Is we yeah. want you to experiment with what all can be built mm-hmm. on that. We have a, a question Megan, from Megan. Hi, Megan. How long does that working women's gown take to make? Do you think by hand? Um, because it's pleated back and pleated front. Ooh. It actually took us the longest. It took longer than it's the a, sack. It's the most steps too. Yeah, it's the oh, and we did it first, and it was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> it's intense. But I would say if you're trying to do it quickly, pleating the back is not what takes the time. Mm-hmm. It's doing the front and fitting it that mm-hmm. takes the most time. So if you need to do something quickly, you might not want to do the double robing yeah. cut in one. You might want to do the falsies, which is also period accurate. Yeah. yeah. We or don't tell you how front. to do that. No. But, <laughs> but you can figure it out. <laughs> and if you need a pattern for that kind of gown, Sign of the Golden Scissors has a great pleated back mm-hmm. gown. That has the tube, uh, mm-hmm. just just uh, applique tube robings on mm-hmm. there. So go for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I hope that was a nice. Yeah, and preview. I know we missed some questions as we were going through, so we'll come back and answer them, um, written wise on uh, the Facebook page. And yeah, so in a couple of weeks we'll do one about the English gown. We'll kind of go a little bit more into it, talk about some of the accessories that we make, the cutest cat pattern. Of all time. Yeah. I'm so excited about that cap pattern. It's adorable. Kerchief, the apron, the mm-hmm. cap, uh, a hat, mm-hmm. mitts. Mm-hmm. We have a little mitts diagram in there. Yeah. Um, so. Fun stuff. So Easily to chew on and swallow and process. Yeah. Hopefully. That's Hopefully. in two weeks. two weeks. So if you guys want to pre-order the book, it's on sale like everywhere right now. Mm-hmm. It's at Barnes & Noble uh, online. Yes. yes. Amazon. Um, a whole bunch of booksellers. If you just Google... The American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. Mm-hmm. You will find all the different sellers mm-hmm. of it. Um, November 21st is mm-hmm. the is the ship date. Is, yeah. um, um, you can all start working on your gowns. For yeah. our European um, customers and fans, our Australian fans, um, I would wager also probably South America, um, New Zealand, Asia. Um, we have been able to find our book for pre-order in every country so far that has been asked. Um, if you're a country that has Amazon, it's there. Yeah, don't buy it. If you're in the EU, don't buy it from Amazon US. You don't need to do that. No. Um, go look on Amazon UK or Amazon mm-hmm. EU. Yeah. Uh, it's not EU. Your various well, like countries, F- you'll like probably Like France, find it. Uh, you know, Germany, etc. Um, since Page Street, our publishers, Page Street, are a subsidiary of Macmillan, it does have international uh, release. And the prices that I've seen are... They're comparable. They're now, comparable. I You're not paying extra for it or anything like that. I don't know if they're being translated into mm-hmm. various languages. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we so. Don't, I don't know. Um, so do the best you can <laughs> with, our, with our writing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had one more comment. I'd love to see a book creating historically accurate versions of fictional characters' gowns from movies. Well, you can use this book to create historically accurate versions of gowns from movies. Mm-hmm. Um, like if Poldark is your, is your thing, but those costumes make you cringe like when I watch it, uh, use, the, use the patterns in our book to do your version of it in a historically accurate way. This is how we want you guys to be creative. Mm-hmm. You, if you want to do an 18th century Beauty and the Beast bell gown that's, you know, use the sack, make it in yellow satin, it would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that idea, though, of going, like, kind of the cosplay route, but doing, that's really cool. Our so. publishers would have to be able to like the <laughs> images, though. <laughs> It gets more complicated. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We cannot thank you yes, enough. You this guys would are awesome. Not have been so possible awesome. or relevant 
without you. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very excited. November 21st, cannot get here fast enough. So excited. Um, and we will be back in two weeks to tell you more about the English Gown. Yay! Thank you. Bye. Bye.